Hi, good evening, Chad. Good evening, Bob. How are you? Very good, thank you. And yourself? Wonderful. Fabulous. Hi. I'm having problems with my laptop, so I'm on my desktop and it's very dark. I'm really sorry. <laughs> It's just showing the mood you're in right now. You're, yeah. in, a dark, you're in a dark place right now. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I have a brand new laptop and my, one of my partners had this issue already. We have a quorum kind of. Oh yeah. I see Stacy's on. Hello um, there. Hi Stacy. How are you? PG King. All right. There we go. Ah. Well. Yeah, just get rid of some of the hot spots. <clears throat> yeah, Zoom has automatic gain control on audio and on video too. Uh, the time is seven o'clock and I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, Madam Secretary, would you care to uh, take roll? Chris, Chris has got Hello, it. Yeah, Chris, would you please? Thank yeah, you. I can do roll call. Uh, Bob Plaza? Present. Roy Edmonds? Present. Larry Haggart? Stacy Jarvis? Yes. Marty McMillan? Present. Michael Hindelang? Here. Michael Bannon? Present. James Kunick? Present. Sarah Coates? Here. Jack Craig? Here. Larry Chris, Rayburn. did you hear Larry Haggard say present? No, I'm sorry. I got you now. And then Larry Reed? She was having troubles with her. Here. Laptop. I'm here. I was on mute. Sorry, here. Okay. Well, um, now that we have the roll call done, do I have a motion to approve the uh, uh, minutes of the uh, November 4th meeting? The February 3rd meeting. Or Feb no, February 3rd meeting. That's right. Thank you. I'm looking at the February 3rd meeting uh, uh, minutes right now. Uh, do I have a motion? Uh, with one minor correction, uh, there was a typographical error in the uh, uh, meeting members present. Yes, we've already corrected that on the website. Okay. Uh, I so move. I so move. Do I hear support? Second. Any other input, uh, changes, corrections, modifications? The only thing I think was the was off on the year. It said February 2020. You're, you are absolutely correct. It should be February 2021. February uh, 3rd, 2021. Thank you for that input, Marty. It was a good catch. With that uh, uh, correction made, uh, do I hear another uh, motion and second? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any not in favor say nay. Hearing no nays, the uh, approval of the uh, minutes is accomplished with a uh, complete uh, unanimous vote. Uh, the uh, next item is dog park application and rules. Chad? Yes, sir. I'm going to go ahead and share the screen, bring that up for everyone to make it easier as well. <clears throat> okay. Can everyone see that all right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So the first thing we'll be looking at is the uh, dog parking application. And 
uh, just before we get started with it, um, after talking with some staff, in order for filing purposes to make a few things easier, our plan is to actually put the resident information up top and then move the um, bullet points into the middle and then just box off at the bottom the office use only. So whatever we change will stay the same or edit. Um, we're just gonna move that to the top. So that way when they go through the folders, things like that, it's easier for them to see the name at the top. So we're just gonna move a few things around just so everybody's aware when you see the final draft. So it's just a new layout. Yep, yep, as simple as that. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of go in that order. Uh, resident information, basically they'll be saying, I'm applying for a new pass, a replacement pass, or renewing a pass. Um, the features with renewing a pass will be basically they can use the same key fob that they will get to renew that. So they, they could potentially use the same key fob for four to five years. A new pass, obviously, they're going to get a brand new key fob um, and a replacement pass is $40. So if you lose it, you have to buy a new pass. There's We're not giving you, it's not a break. It's your responsibility to hang on to that and keep it. Um, Chad, do we have the ability to disable lost key fobs? Absolutely. As, as part of the reason of with us going for the, the price of $40, that's including the uh, card access equipment, uh, maintenance program, the camera monitoring, and the key fobs all included in one package. We have 24-7 service. So anything comes up, something happens right away, we have the contact to have those, those key fobs stopped at that moment. So that's going to be a really nice feature with that. Um, all right. All residents applying for a dog park pass must show proof of their dogs having the following uh, current GP, P dog license, current rabies, DHL, PP, Portatella vaccinations, so that you will see on there, they will mark those off and the expiration dates for those. They will fill in the, the GP, P uh, license number, the name, the breed, and the age, and the sex of the dog. Um, without this information, uh, your dog pass application cannot be processed. You'll have to have that stuff with you, show it, filled out for this, the front desk staff to see that in order to do it. Uh, dog park passes expire December 31st of each year. To renew your pass for the following year, you must pay $40 and provide proof of shots and a current GBP dog license before January 1st. I'm going to make the first initial edit on that. It's actually going to uh, need to change just a little bit. It's going to, you must reapply um, and um, let me say that again. <sighs> um, basically starting at the new year. So you can't do it before the end of that current year because they will have to go back in to get their dog license or to make sure that their shots are up to date. So until they can provide that stuff again for the second year, they won't be able to do it ahead of time. Chad, is, should this be pushed to February 1 then to give the month of January to do that? Or does that not impact that? No, it's, it's just as they get that done, then they will be able to come in. So it will stop from um, a ton of masses coming right in on the 1st of January and starting that or January 2nd. Um, but it will give them time to go and get that stuff. Or if they have everything in place and they're good, they'll be able to come in right away. It just depends on when they'll be able to schedule that stuff with, with our public safety and with their vets. So we're just gonna take out the part about the, um, doing it before the end of the year. Does anybody have any issues with that? Okay. Chad, do you know um, how far in advance somebody can get their, I guess their next year's um, dog license? Because it sounds like that will be a kind of a stopgap for or a gating situation. So, um, yes, it's January, January through December. So it's each year they'll start the new year just like us. So they have to go do that before they'll come down to the, the Parks and Recreation Department. So basically, we're going to have, you know, the, the beginning of January every year where the dog park's not really accessible. I mean, I know it's winter and usage is probably down, but that's what it sounds like. Starting in a January way, one, nobody's going to have all of that done, so the, their access will be cut off, or will we extend them and give them January to get that in order? Um, it, that depends. Um, I can look into that one just to make sure. Um, but I believe again they'll, they'll be able to start in the beginning of January with public safety. So as soon as they can get down there and get that going, I don't know if there's going to be any any major holdups 
um, with getting that at, at public safety. I don't think it's a long uh, process in order to do so. Yeah, I'd, Chad, I'd, I'd support having a month overlap. So if the passes expire on 1231, that you can start the renewal process, or if we have something to do after January and with the city, have the passes expire January 31, uh, just life will intervene for people. And I think James makes a good point. You, you functionally close the dog park. And even if it just takes a couple days, uh, I'd prefer to have a, a one month period during which they could submit their renewals. Sure, I would, I would talk with uh, interim chief uh, Bostock and see if what issues he, he sees might be a problem for us and that we could do that. We could have the passes go February to February, March to March, something like that. Um, so it gives them time. We can push that back because the way it falls, it's almost in two fiscal years anyways for our budget. So it won't really hurt us on how we handle that. I know Gross Point Farms, I believe, goes to the end of March and starts in April and then same into that next year. So I'll look at that one. And once I get a good answer for that, that's what I'll put on the final version to send back to everyone. Hey, Chad, so if someone does not pay in the month of January, does their FOB get shut down? Only the, at the end of the year, everyone's uh, FOBs automatically shut down. That way nobody's using it without coming back in. So all when we decide on that date, those passes will end on that date. So all we have to log into the system is if we're going until the end of March or the end of February, that's what we'll allow it to. Then it shuts down, then you have to, to go get that stuff. So it, pushing it back a month or two might be beneficial for us for that. Okay. Um, please familiarize yourself with the dog park rules, which are on the back of this application. It'll be a front and back that way when they take this copy and they have all the records on their file, they also have the rules that are on it as well. Um, all replacement dog park passes are $40. With, with everything that we've got going into this system, it's their responsibility. It should be good enough to keep it on their keychain or something like that that's important to them, that they will last a long time. You just have to you know, know where it's at. Um, a pass cannot be issued to puppies under four months old uh, due to the need for all vaccinations, a limit of two dogs per adult when visiting the park, up to four dogs in a household can be registered on the same key fob. So basically you have to have two adults uh, bring those dogs in. You can have four up for your family, but you'll have to have the two adults that are of age to, in order to bring those in at one time. As you can see, as I went over, and then at the very bottom, there's the liability. Everybody can take a look at that real quick. If you see any issues with it or anything we'd like to change, just let me know. So two things up at the top, actually, Chad. Uh, there's an extra dash in the phone number between the area code and the exchange. And then this is really getting pedantic, but uh, Aren't we officially the Department of Parks and Recreation as opposed to the Parks and Recreation Department? I believe we are. Just going off the website. Yeah, I, uh, I'll take a look at that one and, and, and double check. That's a real minor one. I can look at that one and, and correct it as needed, as necessary. And I'll look at uh, most of the other contracts that we have too. I think our plan is to make this a carbon copy, our carbon copy contract. So basically once it's filled out, we'll keep a copy, they'll keep a copy. That's how we do most of the contracts at this time. Liability, signature, date, and then at the bottom will be office use only. So the staff that's working the front desk um, and Mary Beth, uh, the date they received it, the FOB number that they'll be giving away, in a spreadsheet will be the information, the individual, the address, the phone number, and the key fob number. That's what's gonna be one of the most crucial parts to this is we have an incident, all right? It happens to be with key fob number 13 and key fob 27. We figure out what the issue is, they, they call over. Okay, it was, issue, it was key pass or you know Betty Smith. All right, perfect. We're looking that up, Betty Smith. All right, she's key fob number 13. We call, uh, the company, Betty Smith, key fob number 13, we need that deactivated as of right now. We figure out everything that happened. 
find out what we do, we either reactivate it or they follow something in the rules in order to get that um, key fob activated again. Uh, cash or credit card, that will show their payment, approved by whichever staff member that was at the front desk and the date that they approved it. Do we see anybody has any other issues with that or are we good on the application? Right, um, I would I would say on the application, maybe uh, you could probably move that third bullet point up into the second bullet point. Let me go back to that just real quick so we can. <clears throat> okay, without this information, your dog, your dog park pass application cannot be processed going along with the vaccinations and the uh, license they have to get. Does anybody have an issue with moving the third bullet point into the second bullet point? Makes sense. Sounds like a good suggestion. All right, perfect. We'll move on. City of Gross Point Park proposed rules for Patterson off-leash dog park. Owners are legally responsible for their dogs and any injuries or damages to persons or property caused by their dogs while entering, using, or exiting the off-leash dog park area. Users agree to identify the city of Gross Point Park by use of the off-leash dog park area for any injuries or damages their dog may cause while entering, using, or ex ex exiting the off-leash dog park area. Use of the dog park is at your own risk. Move on to bullet point number two. Dogs must currently uh, must be currently licensed with the city of Gross Point Park. Bullet point three. Dog park passes are available through the Lavins Activity Center front desk at Windmill Point Park. That's not a rule. I would agree with that. Um, would everybody but it be should be paper? stated somewhere on the document because you said this is going to be on the back side of the application. So maybe it's put in the application somewhere in the application. Would everyone like to see that being as maybe one of the uh, the first or last bullet points in the application? So Chad, yeah. it's also going to be posted at the site. The, the rules will be yes. Yeah, so I, well, I agree it's not a rule. Maybe at the bottom we have something so on the well you don't need it on the application because you of course know you're holding the application if we're posting it at the site that may be useful information sure I, I was just thinking if the application is available on the website having it on the face of the application would let people know where they're supposed to take it yeah makes sense sure i think um what we could do is move that into the application part and then we could put something on there for you know if, if interested in a dog park pass or something like that contact the gatehouse contact the front desk we can put something like that not basically a, affiliated with the rules form that will be um in the dog park itself or on the you know the entrance of the dog park we can put something at the gatehouse or or, or something along the lines there yeah, that way you end up with one less rule and we've already got a big long list of rules so yes yeah good okay the dog or dogs must wear identification tags and gpp license i have a question i have a question on that what type of identification tag i would believe that would be um for their for the shots don't the dogs get that with their shots too. Uh, I'm not sure. Or do do some of the the dogs have that in a you know how they put them inside their collar? They shoot them in with now the identification. Of the dog don't they do that now? I'm not sure. You mean they can just have a tag that says Rosie, you know, and that would be considered an identification tag, but I don't think that's what you're getting at here. Would it be, I guess, their name and their the potential address, things like that? We can look at that one. I can look to remove that if that's not something we need. Most dogs have a rabies tag that they get from the vet. Does the license not oh. include any of that type of information, uh, the license tag? 
I guess what I'm, I just, it just came to me. It's a chip. Don't they have a, some dogs have a chip? Yeah. Yep. So yeah, I, uh, I don't know if, I don't know if we want to have, if we should put that in there because some dogs, if they, if you have the paperwork that says they have their shots and their license, they may have a chip on them, uh, you know, inserted in the dog. So I don't know if we have to have them wear the identifications. The I think, problem, it, I think yeah. it's a good visual to have because you're not going to be able to read the chip. You know, the vet can read that. Yeah, you need a scanner. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, why wouldn't you have a tag, a identification tag? I think it's a good visual to have in case uh, um, somebody Another, there identified the dog. Sure. I think I think we'd be okay. safe just right. in order to keep that on there. Okay, but I just think that we might want to clarify identification tag then. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Name and address, something like that. Okay, I've got that. And also maybe starting that one with just dogs must wear like to be consistent with some of the other points instead of the dogs. Sure. Okay, all residents applying for and or renewing their dog park license and or pass must show proof of their dog dogs having the following vaccinations, rabies, DHLPP, um, and the Bordetella. Uh, please do not bring a sick dog to the park. So, Chad, what's the license referring to here? That would be the the um, probably we're saying license or pass instead of a key fob. We could change it to fob. What does everybody feel is the best? Um, well, the dog park license that will be the the license they have to get from the city. In order to bring that down, we'll have to see the dog license. Right, but we're only concerned about the park rules, not the city rules, right? So if we just say residents replying for and or renewing their dog park pass, that's really what we're dealing with. Right. So basically we could eliminate showing that and just and just saying that they must have that and do not bring the sick dog in. Well, if we just take out license and or. Yep. Because that... <laughs> The city may separately require that, but that's not part of this application. Yep. This is all about the passes, the park passes. Yeah, yep. you just take out those three words and you're good. Okay. License and or. Yeah. Okay. Got and it. I would remove the um, parentheses on the please do not bring a sick dog to the park. And Got it. Perhaps make it its own bullet point. We took out a bullet point above how does everybody feel about that I, I think it's a good idea because it it, it brings attention to it so uh, people might not read that if it's at the end of that long sentence they might just skim through it i think it's a good idea to have a bullet point on please do not bring a sick dog to the park i agree okay i, Got it. I agree the wording doesn't sound like a rule though a rule would be something more like uh, six dogs are prohibited from using the park or something like that. Do you want to go ahead? But yeah, I, I like Larry's suggestion. Sick dogs are not allowed. Well, you could add it to the point down below about dogs in heat, pregnant or under four months old, are prohibited. So yeah, all sick dogs, dogs in heat, you know, something like that about dogs that aren't allowed. All right, I like that. I think that would be a good place to, to put that in there. Yeah. yeah, good idea. Okay. Quick question about the Bordetello. We're going to be outside. We're not indoors. Okay. Uh, all dogs must be leashed prior to entering and upon leaving the dog park area, no unleashed dogs will be permitted outside the area of the off-leash dog park. We, we skipped one, Chad. Oh, I'm sorry. Dog owners, oh, I'm sorry. Dog owners must remain with their dogs or dog within the fence area and have their dog or dogs under their owner's control. Dogs must always be supervised. Yeah, we've got a, a pronoun issue here. I think have their dogs under control is fine without their owners at the end of the sentence. 
Yeah, Chad, I was thinking about this one as well. Um, I was kind of thinking dogs must be supervised at all times. Owners must remain within fenced in area. Did you say that one more time? Dogs must be supervised at all times. Owners must remain within fenced area or fenced in area. I wouldn't remove the language about control. You can be in the fenced area and watching the dogs dog must and be not under control. Dogs must be supervised at all times and under control. I I, I would like to uh, well, think about that before we agree on that because as we all know, if the dog is not on a leash, uh, there's a debate about to what extent the dog is going to be under anyone's control. If he's supervised, that's about the most you can do, isn't it? Yes, I would agree with that. I think that if you are in a dog park. Point of order, who's speaking? Uh, I think that, Larry, this is actually fairly common language. A lot of this language was taken from, you know, a score of other um, rules from other dog parks. And the, the idea, I think, comes back to what Michael was saying. The dog is supposed to be under your control. That means if the dog is off the leash, the dog, for instance, should uh, have recall. When you call the dog, the dog should come. That means the dog's under your control. If you don't have a dog that's under your control, you probably ought to be thinking about if you should be in the dog park. So supervising being in the same space and being under the control are actually slightly different, I think. Yeah, and, and I agree with Mike. I would keep the current structure of the rule uh, other than the grammatical hiccup at the end of the first sentence uh, because I, I see three different concepts there as well. I think that one's going to be left up to an awful lot of interpretation as to what constitutes control then. But uh, yeah, but if there's an incident and we don't require control, uh, it makes it far more difficult for Chad to decide what to do. I, 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 I wouldn't remove control without running it past the city attorney uh, personally. But. Either that or somewhere you're going to have to define what control means. And that means, uh, from what I've heard just now, that when called, the dog will come to the owner, right? What I, what I believe will, will, could potentially be that situation will lead to some type of report. If, if there's a, no way that they can have them under control, that's going to lead us into the situation that we'll take care of um, if something was to happen. But what we're saying is pretty common is you should be able to keep that dog under control with as simple as a command to come back to you or something like that. I don't, you're not gonna be able to keep him on the leash or that dog on the leash the entire time. So you're gonna to have to know that you have that verbal command or control of your dog. Yeah. So, I think so maybe, maybe be, we should say verbal control then or something. Just I, so I people understand what it means. Yeah, I, I think we're over, we're, we're looking at it too I mean, in depth I there. Think, I think the idea, Larry, is it's an expectation. You're setting it, an expectation that people have some control over their dog's behavior. And yeah. that should be a warning to people that it, if you know that you don't, you expect to turn your dog loose and go crazy and not come when you call it and you want to leave, you should think twice about if maybe you should get some help uh, solving your problem. So I yeah. think the next question yeah. without an ironclad guarantee or definition would be. Don't and I think it also gives the guard, the park staff the ability to make that judgment, saying your dog's out of control. Um, so I, I think I'm fine with it. Okay. Can we all agree that we will stick with that for now? I agree. Yes. 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 Yep. Okay. All dogs must be leashed prior to entering and upon leaving the dog park area. No unleashed dogs will be permitted outside the area of the off-leash dog park. Agree? Yep. Dogs with a history of aggressive behavior are prohibited. A dog owner must leash and remove a dog showing aggressive behavior immediately. Dog owners are limited to two dogs in the park at one time. All dogs in heat, pregnant, or under four months old are prohibited. It is recommended that all dogs are spayed and neutered. That's the one we were going to add to that. What was it again that we were adding to that one? No sick dogs. Please, oh, please, yeah, sickness. Yeah, do not bring a sick dog to the park. I, I think you can just add it between heat and pregnant. So all dogs in heat, sick, 
pregnant or under four months old. That, that's a good idea, yeah. Okay. E sick. Okay. Since we use the Oxford comma and prior rules and a comma after pregnant. No food, human or dog is allowed in the dog park. Dog owners must clean up their dog's fecal waste. Dogs must be accompanied by an adult 18 years or older. Children ages five to 17 may only visit the dog park with an adult. No strollers, bicycles, or chairs inside the dog park fenced area. I believe we talked about this one once before. Uh, did we come up with, uh, there's gonna be some sort of seating provided or are, are we expecting people to stand all the time they're in there? There will be uh, ample seating provided. We're, we don't wanna take that chance of anything happening to somebody's own chair or thing that they bring in a distraction, something like that. We're gonna have plenty of seating um, for anybody that's in that park at one time. Okay, great. That's good. Uh, so no strollers. We don't have any age of someone that would be coming in with a stroller. And, and bicycles, that's that's just a uh, obviously obvious no. Yeah, so they'll have to take the babies out of the stroller. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no babies. You're hilarious, Larry. <laughs> Back up, sorry about that. Uh, the dog park is open 7.30 a.m. to dusk year round and may be closed for any reason at the discretion of the director of parks and recreation or the city manager. So Chad, would it be simpler here just to say the park is open, uh, the dog park is open when uh, Patterson is open? Uh, no, and it's sometimes in the year uh, they open up at, um, actually, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's seven 7.30 year round. Um, so ice, ice skating, it's open later. Yes, but just the ice rink is the rest of the park yeah. is closed. So yeah, a majority of the year, the dog park would actually close quite early. But yeah, that we could we could say when the park opens, if you guys would prefer, do we want to say 7.30 a.m. so we know that, or do you want me to say when the park opens? I'm okay with the 7.30. I just didn't know how often park hours change. This is what you and I were emailing about. I, I didn't want to create a situation where the dog park could be read to open earlier than the park, but yep, I, I believe... I believe we made those edits on the website, but yeah, we're going to stick with with Patterson opening at 7.30 a.m. year round um, with some of the staff within that department um, come in at 7.30 for their shifts. It only makes sense to have gate staff on as well, so they know everyone coming in and out at that time. Then I, I think the way you have it makes sense. Then. Okay. Why do you capitalize dusk, the D in dusk? It could be lowercase. Should be. Yeah. And shouldn't the A and B uppercase? Pardon me? No, that doesn't have to be, I don't think. AM can be lowercase. It can be? Yeah, I've seen it both ways. Yeah. Yeah. We need okay. an English teacher for this. <laughs> well, I think um, Michael's pretty good at this stuff. So <laughs> refer to him. He approves. <laughs> I, I got to stop talking that it's uh, no more, Roy, no more. We just need to be consistent, whatever we do. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. And I, I got some speeches I want to send your way so you can just proofread them for me, please. <laughs> Happy to. Additional rules may be issued by the director of parks and recreation or the city manager as may be needed for the orderly operation of the off-leash dog park area and the city ordinance. I don't know that you need the city ordinance site we refer to the licenses and other things that are covered by ordinance too so i think you could probably take that out you could get rid of maybe as well as needed you could just say or the city man manager as needed for the orderly yeah. operation of the off-leash dog park area yeah, Good. This yeah. Shorter, that's all more concise yeah got it noted and take them, take them. reference to the ordinance either i agree just yeah. take the may and the b out here's here's one i think that might uh i kind of got us the last time i'd like to touch on on this one and, and get exactly what we'd like violation of dog park rules include but are not limited to restricted use of park temporary or permanent bans on park usage and professional dogs uh training slash evaluation at an owner's expense whoa <laughs> wow that's a good one 
Yeah, um, so by, first, oh. yeah, go ahead, Lori. Well, by park, are we referring to the dog park or the or Patterson Park, the park pass? I guess that's up to me, ultimately, depending okay. on, on what happens. More than likely, I would say it, it would only have effect on the dog park. I wouldn't completely remove someone's park dog. pass. Yeah, I think we should leave there as much to your discretion. Sounded like Uncle Chase. As much to your discretion as we can. This gives you quite a bit of flexibility, and chances are you won't need much of it, but at least you've got it covered here. Yeah. I, I, I think we need something, Chad. As we say violation. I think it's really punishment for or sanctions for violation of the rules. Or violation of the rules may result in restricted use of park, temporary or permanent bans on park usage, and or professional dog training. So yeah, it may result in that's a better verbiage, I think. And maybe also add that at the discretion of the um, director of parks and recreation or the city manager, since that it sounds like that's a Chad call. Yep. Sure. Anyone else have any uh, recommendations? Um, I have a question. Chad, can you? Uh, Bob, can you make an announcement that um, it's just the uh, commission right now until public comment? I, we've had a lot of people yes. throughout the, the <clears throat> meeting. If they continue to do that, we may have to remove them from the meeting. Yes, uh, right now uh, the commission members are meeting and uh, only the commission members uh, have uh, their audio able to be turned on. Uh, there is a item in the uh, meeting uh, later on, uh, item number six, public comment. And at that point, uh, you can have uh, up to three minutes to make your public comment per person. After that, the audio will be muted after three minutes. Thank you, Bob. You're very welcome. Any so, anyone else have anything? Um, the... Yeah, Chad. A point on that last point, I agree with uh, the may results in, but that, I guess the second part uh, of it, I was just thinking like, you know, it, it would say violation of dog park rules may result in, but not limited to restricted use of dog park, temporary or permanent ban of dog park, professional dog training evaluation at owner's expense may re may be required to reinstate dog park. Privileges. I do like the, so the end of that. Yeah. Just, so that was again, it's professional dog truck, dog training slash evaluation at owner's expense may be required to reinstate dog park privileges. I, I think that's nice. That's a good good suggestion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Okay. So Chad, the, the only thing then is do we have something in there that says essentially or or such other restrictions or such other uh, requirements at the discretion of the director of parks and recreation so the way we've structured it now violation of dog park rules may result in uh, restricted use bans and and then at the end we're going to have and may require professional training or evaluation should we have something that says or such other requirements as determined by the director of parks and rec? Yeah, do you think that's, I think maybe Sarah or no, maybe Laurie had mentioned that we, maybe we combine those three together of um, in order to reinstate or, or throw in just before that, the part of the city manager and parks and recreation director, the two of us, or, you know, having those classes in order to reinstate, um, the reactivation of the, the key fob, something along the lines of that, include all that in, is, is that what everybody thinks would be? Yeah, I just want to make sure there's some sort of catch-all that you can have so that if there's an issue and there's an appropriate result that your hands aren't tied by this being an, an overly narrow construct and giving that discretion, uh, whether it's to you or whether it's a city manager or whoever we're investing it in, uh, I'd like you to have that flexibility. Perfect. Do we want to uh, spend maybe just a, a couple minutes on that and maybe come no, up with what that is? Yeah, to clarify it. 
Okay. All right, and at the, the bottom of the rules um, is just a, a small blurb about the incident slash bite report. There's obviously a whole report for that. I just thought that this would be something helpful on the rule sheet um, that tells you exactly what to do if that is to happen, which is an incident slash bite report should be filed immediately with GPP Public Safety at their phone number for any bodily injury, including broken skin to persons or dogs. All of their incident reports need to be filed within 48 hours with the Parks and Recreation Director, my phone number, dog park incident slash bite reports can be obtained at the Patterson Park Gatehouse, Parks and Recreation Office, and on our website. I just wanted to make sure that as soon as something like that was to happen, if it did, they knew exactly how to handle it. I think it's good having it right there with the rules. Yes, I agree. So, a couple of things, Chad. I would have it be incident slash bite reports at the uh, the first line, and then in the third line, should it be dog park incident bite report forms can be obtained. Uh, that one may or may not be necessary. It just struck out, uh, just, jumped out just, at me as unusual. Just remove dog park. Uh, no, so dog park incident bite, it's either, is it report forms is the question because you're not, right, you're, you're filing a report. And so the form to do that is how it made sense to me. So instead of incident slash bite reports, it would be incident slash bite report forms. Yes. Yeah. I agree with that. I agree. Okay. Are you striking dog park? No. Why not? No. Get rid of it. Get rid of dog park. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, Mr. Hingdeling, Michael, uh, why wouldn't you do the same thing up front here in the first sentence? You have incident slash bite report reports should be. Are you saying it's a form or you? What's your thinking there? Once it's complete, to me, it's a report as opposed to the form. So you pick up the blank form, and you file the report. I would strike though for Roy, the uh, dashes after the area codes in both the phone numbers yep. and interpose, interpose a comma before extension 200. <laughs> yes, not the AT&T AT approved uh, telephony rules. Methodology. Right. We, we try to remain current here. In yeah. Is uh, Gatehouse uh, not um, tapped in offices, is that okay? What was that one? Oh, it's the last line. Gatehouse. It starts. I'm, Gatehouse I'm good with that. You have Gatehouse is um, a lowercase, and then you have office is uppercase. Oh, yeah. To be consistent. Yep. I will do that. Okay. And then the only reason in the beginning that I have that as incident slash bite report should be filed immediately. Um, the way that I'm looking at that, um, again, we can change it however we need to. That what I'm saying filed immediately is, is geared more towards that bodily injury, including the broken skin. If someone has a smaller incident and they think about it for a day or something and say, you know what, I probably should have reported that. Yeah. They're going to come in. We got an argument or I fell going out or my dog scratched stuff, something like that. I'm not worried about them going right over to the gate guard every time I'm, that's something I'm wondering if they should think about a little bit. Um, it's, it's what I want them to know that if there's any kind of fight or confrontation, something like that with broken skin, something like that to, you know, either the person or the dog, they, they have to call public safety immediately. That's not something you wait three or four days and then talk about the attack that happened and, and try to have something happen after that. It needs to be done right away. And it's not something that I want my gate staff handling. I want public safety on top of something like that. Again, if it's something sure. minor, go right to the gatehouse, get that best, take that and drop it off or give it to the staff and the staff will bring it over to me or come to my office so we can handle that. Um, but anything in, in involving any kind of a fight or something like that, I want public safety to be there as soon as possible. Yeah, it's an assault. Absolutely. Yep. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. we'll, we'll go ahead and move on to... Helpful hints from Eloise. So an incident slash bite report form, do we, are we, we're not doing that. It's, it's the same as the beginning up top, correct? We'll just make the necessary changes. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just just report. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, it'll be the date of the incident, the time, location, dog park, entrance, parking lot. Um, James, you had mentioned something to me before about that, and I, I thought that was a, a good uh, question you had brought up. Can you share that with everyone, please? Yeah, on the location to add a, a, a box for other, and then a line to describe. I mean, I don't anticipate it happening, but it should just be on there. That yeah. way, if somebody yeah. wants to be more specific, they can be more specific. Yeah. I would agree. Uh, the name, the email, uh, address, phone number, dog's name, breed, color, weight, and then other individuals slash dogs involved. If names are not known, uh, so, please. Provide. So, Chad, I, I found this a bit confusing. So, if I'm there and I get bit, the, the top form should the top form specify so the dog's name breed etc if is that supposed to go in the other individuals involved is am i i found the the layout a little confusing unless it's a dog on i mean if it's a dog bites a dog this makes sense if it's dog bites a person i thought it uh, wasn't as clear as perhaps it could be sure and and uh repeat that one more time more more so what i'm hoping is if it's the fight or the attack, that will be a police report. And then the incident uh, slash bite report will follow the police report and be filled out that way. So maybe just have a heading that says, you know, individual submitting report. Yes. So the top part, that makes sense. Say that one more time, please. Individual submitting report. For what name? Okay. Uh, above the name address above that first block yeah oh i see perfect thank you mm. we have the information there i see so that contrasts with other individuals slash dogs involved yes i got you yeah maybe a third party um do you want to put anything in here about a photo everybody's got a phone everybody takes photos um it, I mean, I guess uh, they, uh, is, are you able to upload a photo or is it just you upload the, um, maybe you don't upload these at all, do you? These go so, right to. Um, no, it says photo then. Yeah, it, it says it in the introduction, Roy. Please include photos. Of any injuries. Mm -hmm. Oh, where's it say that? Bottom of the first paragraph. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Thank you. I, actually, that brings us back to the first paragraph, Chad. That refers to code of conduct violations. Is that the same as the dog park rules? Yep. Okay, we so can, we should just change that. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. so again, being consistent is helpful. Yep. Absolutely. Good catch. And then ask for... I missed that one, Michael. Where was that one? So in the incident report introductory, introductory paragraph, third line, it refers to the code of conduct and that'll be changed to be dog park rules. Thank you. Office use only, check one in person by phone or email, uh, follow up name, uh, the photos provided, yes or no, actions taken. Other, please explain action slash result. Um, the, the last section we'll get into is something that we had seen some uh, other dog parks use. Um, it was just some helpful hints for visiting Patterson Park, uh, Patterson Park Dog Park. Um, I did have one, one recommendation from one of our former members, uh, Mary Beth Hathaway. Um, it, it's very minor to all of this, but again, I really thought this sheet would help um, a lot of those interested in the dog park to see if it would be for them. She actually came up with the name uh, Tail Wagging Tips for visiting Patterson Park Dog Park instead of Helpful Hints. Does anyone have any issue if we were to, to change something, the name like that? I think it's a good idea. I, I like, like it. it. Go for it. Sounds fine. Um, it, Michael, would that be a tail dash wagging or would that just be tail wagging? <laughs> oh, it it would be tail dash wagging. Yeah, I thought so. Thank you. <laughs> <Noted>. <laughs> 
Um, no, uh, not all dogs are candidates for a dog park, even nice ones. Uh, some just do not have the, the personality to enjoy a dog park. If you were unsure, you could take your dog to the dog park. Uh, you could take your dog to a facility for a one-on-one -on -one or group play evaluations and classes to help prepare your dog. Possible contacts are. Well, we wanted to just list a few on there or a couple on there um, to see if that's something they could do ahead of time to make sure it's the right fit. I've got a little concern about recommending commercial businesses. What if we get a call from someone saying, why aren't I listed? I think that perhaps we can take that off. It's easy enough to Google. I, I, was, we, I think the same thing. Yep. Chris Dalmage also told me that I probably shouldn't do that. So I apologize. <laughs> he gave me some good advice. Well, I didn't listen to was my friend. I, I, I wanted to help them out by, by making it easy because, you know, as soon as we put it in there, they're going to call and say, well, who can we contact or talk to? That's something we can keep in-house and we'll let them know of some, some options. Yeah. You're being or, too or helpful, you not you? You could actually have verbiage that says something like you can search online for available, you know, such and such <laughs> services. I, I'm not sure that we need to yep. include that. that. Yeah. Okay. And on the heading on this one, I would have a question mark. Yep. And then other headings seem to have more capitalizations. So I, it, I don't have strong feelings one way or the other, but I think you might capitalize right and dog to kind of match the rest of the look. Yeah, why don't you capitalize that anything that isn't just a connective word, you know, four is okay to leave lowercase, but right. Yep. Your dog could be capitalized when to intervene. Yep. Easy. Entering the park. Um, and now there's one thing I was going to mention about that top part. Um, it was uh, some just do not have the right temperament or personality. Do, does anyone matter if we were to change or add that? No, I like it. Fine. Fine with me. It's a good idea. Temperament's a good word. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. Uh, entering the park. Do not open the outside gate if the inside gate is open. Only one family of dogs is permitted in the neutral zone at a time. Dogs must be leashed in the neutral zone. Keep your leash with you inside the, the park in case you need to remove your dog in an emergency. So when, when you are releasing, uh, when you are taking your dog out, you are in the dog park play area, the off leash area. Um, you leash them up there and then take them back in through the neutral zone. Is that how you get it done? Sounds like it. Because you're, you're going to have, you have a neutral zone to get them in, right? You, you open the first gate and the uh, dog's on the leash. You're in the neutral zone. Then you remove it and then you open the second gate. Is that how it works? Yes. Okay, so reverse that for me. How does it work when you reverse it? So you're, you're taking them out of the off-leash area, the play area, um, do you leash them there? Or do I would you believe leash? you leash them right before you go into the- Neutral uh, zone? Yeah? Neutral zone. Yeah, okay, or in the neutral zone, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, why does it matter if he if you leash him in the neutral zone? As long as he's leashed by the time you open the outer gate, you're in good shape. Right. Right? Yeah, yeah. Leash, oh, leashing and unleashing in the neutral zone. I was just thinking it through. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The, I mean those tips say the opposite of what we just discussed. So this says that you must be leashed in the neutral, in the neutral zone. zone. So it, you know if to avoid confusion, if the neutral zone is supposed to be the safety buffer, right? The dog doesn't get out when someone else opens the gate. Uh, is there a reason not to leash or unleash in the park and keep it as leashed in the neutral zone? Would that be, I don't know if that's easier or harder from a practical perspective. Yeah, I think I, I think the reason you unleash and leash in the neutral zone is some dogs become more defensive when they're on a leash with their owners. And the dogs tend to relax when they're in the park, not attached, physically attached with a leash to their owners. So it's kind of just a, a safety thing because all dogs don't react the same way. James is absolutely Some dogs are perfectly fine off the, the leash. Yeah. yeah, I know that James and Mike have spent a lot of time on this issue. So perfectly happy to defer to them on that substance. So we should just check, 
change the tip to dogs must be uh, leashed and unleashed in the neutral zone. The neutral. And I think that gets the message across. Mm -hmm. Got it. Uh, I would also remind you guys that we are, and ladies, that we are having two sets of gates, right? One is for going in and one is for going out. They're side by side, right, Chad? So we're never going to have people swimming in two directions at the same time. I will double check, but I think it, I think it might just be the single. I think they they're not going to do double because of the um, the fob entry. I'll double check on that. We initially talked about that. I'll get that answer um, actually, and by tomorrow I'll have that answer for everyone. I know we had talked about going through the double. I've just got to make sure with the key fob if that's going to allow the exit back out or not create an issue. But if that's the case, then yeah, we'll never have an issue with a dog coming in at the same time as the dog going out. I think the, the one thing we were looking at might potentially be um, how they could potentially come in that um, exit, that outer exit gate, if there's not a key fob or anything on that. I just wanna make sure how that locks, if we're okay. But I think, I think we should be fine. I'll send that um, as soon as I can get an answer back. Uh, plane when to intervene during play it is normal and appropriate for dogs to bark growl wrestle chase mouth paw bow and yelp at each other intervene when there is more than one dog picking on another dogs are bowling charging snarling snapping at or not letting a dog uh, get up or away other dog or dogs are chasing without rest or dogs are cornering or uh, crowding another dog so chad can I back up to a bigger question here? Is there maybe an American Kennel Club document like this or something similar that we can point to? I'm getting a little hesitant about us recommending to people how to break up biting dogs, et cetera. Uh, yeah. It, yeah, the more we're, we're talking here, the more that's jumping out at me. Yeah, I, can, I will double check on those to make sure that they follow with this. I can send that out as well to, to find that information and make sure that that lines up with anything that's in here uh, regarding the dog fights or anything to, to help handle that. I'll, I'll yeah, double check that to make sure. You may even want to run this past Jake Howlett. If it's one thing, if we say, here's what the American Kennel Club says about dog parks and make sure you follow these ideas. It's another, if we have a Gross Point Park document telling people how to break up dog fights. And Absolutely. I'd, I'd have Jake look at that. Once this is approved by the Recreation Commission, it is then going to Jake uh, for his final approval okay. before anything is, is official and posted. Just one more comment on that. It just it seems that everything that's described there would be considered aggressive behavior. Agreed. So maybe, you know, that, that's the catch-all if, if, if it's okay with our city attorney to have a tip like that, um, and that's pretty broad. Again, I think it goes back to one of our earlier comments about the rules um, that at least then our, our um, park staff has the ability to make a judgment. Right. Yeah, the, 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 the biggest reason I put it in there was to show someone if, you know, something is going to result after that, if, if that were to happen, um, but it's basically, this is how you should try if, if that happens rather than I'm just going to put my hands in between the two of them and try and push them away and then things get even worse. So yeah. if, if we need to remove that or Jake feels we need to remove dog fights completely, that's, that's not a problem. We'll take that out. You know what? Um, or breaking up a fight. I think these are really helpful hints that some places don't give out. I commend you for putting this together. I think it's great. I think you can solve it. It's not a rule. You're saying here's some helpful hints and all you have to do is cite the literature put something for more information, see, and give the AKC link that describes this, and then you're covered. I mean, if that's what the AKC does to, tells you to do, and you're saying, here, this is just a helpful hint, go look at this for more information, and that seems pretty straightforward. Absolutely, and I would, I would think that uh, Jake Hallett more than likely will, will look this document over and say, to keep yourself on the safer side, don't hand this out or don't put this out there, or, Yes, you've covered things that are recommended by American Kennel Club, things like that, that will be okay. There won't be anything that comes back on us. Um, so, Michael, I'll, I'll definitely, again, all documents are going to Jake before anything is, is uh, final approved 
approval or on the website or once this process begins. To help sure. support the rule about uh, prohibiting aggressive behavior, uh, you might want to modify that second paragraph to reference that, you know, uh, when there is aggressive behavior, here's how you might consider intervening so that it refers to something that's in the dog rules that is prohibited. And it goes into a little bit more detail as to how you de define aggressive behavior then you can, you know, because it talks about picking on one another, bullying, snapping at all of that. They'll get the idea of, oh, that's what aggressive behavior is. So two, two thoughts. Number one, we're getting quite close to the city codes aggressive language in terms of the dangerous dog definition. And I would hate for us to create our own definition uh, or get into something close to that. Uh, and then second, just before I forget, shouldn't the entering uh, bullet points be rules as opposed to hints? The entering the park, do not open the gate and dogs must be leashed and unleashed. Don't we want those to be rules for use of the park? That seems like a rule to me. I agree with you there. Okay. Chad, these um, helpful hints, where did you um, see, how, when were they going to be distributed or was it something you were thinking of posting online? Like how was this document going to get out? Um, it would be posted online. It would also be part of the, the packet or the um, documents that they get with the application and the rules that would go with it. Okay. Um, and I forget exactly where we were at with, um, I think maybe the owners, owners must be aware where their dogs are at our all times and stay close to control slash protect them in the face of a potential fight. So you're paying attention, you're watching, you're, you have your dog under control and are keeping an eye on it. That's, that's kind of where we were going with that. Some days it's just a bad mix, leave the park, go for a walk or come back later. Again, if you're, if you see signs of your dog becoming, starting to become aggressive, we're not acting like them normal selves, then you know you just need to leave the park immediately. Um, if there are consistent altercations, evaluate if the park is right for your dog. These again are just generals. We're not saying that we're hoping that they're gonna come in with that. It's just things to see in yourself. If you're just catching small things of that, you might know that this isn't gonna be right and you can go back and look for those companies. You may need to go and contact them um, to see if it's right for your dog or maybe they're just not the right age or just not the right type of dog to be in a dog park. Um, mm -hmm. breaking up a fight never reach your hands into the middle of a fight leash dogs and move away uh, maintain a cool head yelling and getting upset will only add to the frenzy the safest way to break up a fight two people are required each person grabs the back feet of the dogs both dogs should be pulled apart with the legs up keep the dogs apart and start turning in a circle the dogs will be forced to sidestep with their front feet again i, I hope that this is never something that happens the reason I'm giving this information out is because had I not read this, I would have probably would have been one of those individuals that just tried to get in the way of the dogs and been in more danger myself than, cat, than grabbing the back of the legs and lifting over something like that. It's not something that I want to happen or, or hope ever happens, but I want someone to be prepared no matter the size of the dog or what the situation is. They're at least informed on how to handle that situation if they can and are able to. I think it's a great tip. It, it's uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. You're, you're not putting your hand in front of the two dogs or up, you know, you just grab the back paws and pull back. And that's a great tip. Where did that come from out of curiosity? Uh, that's, that's one that I actually found from Clinton Township with their dog park. Okay. Uh, owners should leash their dogs and leave the park uh, to ensure the fight will not continue. You know, I have a problem with this breaking up a fight. I mean, you could give an 18 year old kid, you know, and a fight breaks out or even an elderly person or something. I just, I would not put anything like this in here, how to break up a fight. Uh, where would this, again, I missed something maybe, where would this be posted or how would this be distributed? It would be given to them with their, with their application and the park rules. Oh. Oh, Once okay. again, th these, are, these are hints, you know, just yeah. to help people yeah. if it ever does happen. It's a hint, it's a suggestion, and uh, yeah, okay, if you guys agree, I, I yeah. just, I look again, at it nervous, but that's fine, I'm okay. Right, 
Right. I can see where you're coming from as well. And I think that's, I think we'll be safe with once Jake Hallett looks at it and if he sees this yeah. and says, yep, don't, don't put yourself or open yourself up to that. Right. It'll be taken right off. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm okay with that. <clears throat> and the next spot we were at um, just, again, I'm just reiterating on the, the incident slash bite report. So I'll look at, at what we had up top and make those little, little minor error or, uh, corrections or revisions that we need to add. But I'm just putting it out there because I want them to see it in enough places that they know what to do if, if a situation happens. Um, and then I put down the, the city of GPP contacts again so they can see public safety, Patterson Park Gatehouse, in uh, my office, which is are the extensions for Chris and myself. Okay, and okay. that that should cover everything for those documents. I think we've put in everything that we needed to. We'll go back up to the agenda. Is there, there appears to be no old business. Uh, I, I would like to add some old business if I could, Mr. Chairman. Yes, please, Mike. Uh, it's old business because it's not uh, related to the, the rules so much as the process by which we came to the dog park and what I hope are the expected outcomes. And I've been thinking about this a lot lately since our last meeting. You know, as we work to finalize these rules and best practices for the dog park, we're getting ready to start construction which I understand our site was already vandalized, but hopefully we'll get it uh, fixed soon. Uh, the same residents, the same few residents have spoken at every one of our commission meetings and every council meeting, uh, and I'm sure they're gonna speak tonight when I'm done, advancing what I see as very cynical arguments in an apparent effort to subvert our progress towards the dog park. Uh, one of these arguments that's been repeated for many, many months has been the lack a suggested lack of involvement of the residents. And personally, I could say that I've been involved in trying to work on the dog park since 2014, when I had a series of meetings with then city manager Craniac and then parks and recs director Solomon and the Gross Point Farms dog park uh, director. And after that, Jared, the fellow who wrote all of you at the last before the last uh, commission meeting, who's an organizer of the Detroit dog park, and I did a series of presentations all through 2015. Uh, one was to this commission, some of you were there and I'm sure you remember, to the city council and to the planning commission. Hundreds of people attended these meetings. Numerous articles were published in the Gross Point News. Nearly 200 people signed a petition in favor of a dog park in Patterson Park. So this was well uh, publicized. And although the council did ultimately approve a dog park, of course it was not in Patterson, at the time, it was Mack and Wayburn, which was subsequently sold. But in 2019, uh, City Council revisited this and by a six to one vote directed administration to go ahead and solicit further public information and to get comments from the public and to finalize the design and location within Patterson at the park. And you all know that five workshops were held at various sites, most of them being in Patterson Park. Polls were conducted on several Gross Point Park Facebook pages, revealing that 90% of all park residents who responded to the poll, which included all the Grand Marais neighbors, voted for the so-called Site A that's been selected. So then in September, the administration released their report affirming the choice of Site A. Even as they've been trying this whole time to work with the few residents who have some concerns to accommodate their concerns, and they've already made several accommodations to change the footprint of the park, to change the design, the layout. So I think whatever you say about the dog park, a reasonable person would have to conclude that it's been the most analyzed and discussed amenity in the history of the park. The other argument that's been uh, parried about is that Patterson is a passive park. We've heard this many times, and this belies all of the other activities we go have going on there. The splash pad, the playscape, the golf area, the ice skating rink, the high volume of kayakers, and of course, the beloved pickleball. Another argument which has been advanced by the, a few NIMBY neighbors there is that allowing dogs in Patterson is dangerous to children. We hear it's dangerous to children. Uh, but they have advocated that we build a dog park in Windmill Point Park instead. 
where of course there are no children. So that obviously rings very, very ho uh, hollow, that argument. And I would point out that we've had over a hundred residents and their dogs with passes walking through the park for a number of years now without any serious incident. Now, the latest argument I've heard against the dog park is several weeks ago that's been promulgated is that it's a construction of the dog park is contributing to global warming. No, I'm not kidding, seriously. So you get the idea of where we're going, obstruct at any price. Now, as a result of this persistent campaign by a very few residents, I've started to cringe. I come to these meetings, I go to city council, the dog park comes up and I cringe. Uh, maybe some of you have had the same reaction and can't wait for this to be over because it's become a painful process. So I really had to stop and sit down uh, about a week ago and remind myself what this is all about, really, in the end, the demonstrable benefits that we will obtain from the dog park. And I, I would like to make that point. Um, according to the American, I mean, this is not Mike Bannon, according to the American Kennel Club and the National Parks and Recs Association, this is what a dog park will do. It allows dogs to exercise and socialize safely, uh, reducing issues outside of the park in the community at large, like excessive barking or aggression. And the best known example of this that has been published happened in New York City, where the addition of many off-leash dog parks led to a 90% decrease in the number of dog bites in New York City. The dog park will also provide a venue for dog owners from around the city to socialize. And I think that's important. Personally, all of the younger friends I've made in the park recently have all been through the interactions of our dogs. And finally, I would say that this helps support all the other activities of the city that we're going on through the master planning we'll hear about and all the other efforts to attract and retain younger residents. Younger residents expect this amenity. They know that this amenity exists in many, many other venues. And we're in competition with those towns and cities who already have dog parks. So when I thought about all the benefits that we're gonna accrue, uh, all these compelling reasons, it really brought, finally it brought a smile back to my face after all these months. And I really, really look forward to finishing this process, opening up the dog park and taking my dogs for their first visit in the spring. And I'd really like to reach out and thank you, Chad and Chris, and of course, Nick, for your efforts to see this very, at times, difficult, painful process to completion. So thank you. Very well stated. Thank you very well, much, Mike. Well said. <clears throat> uh, the next item on the agenda is new business. Do I hear any new business? Going once, going twice. Public comment. All right, Chris. Again, uh, let me reiterate that uh, the timer is on the uh, screen. And at the end of the three minute time period, the audio will be muted. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the first person and that is gonna be uh, Sion. If you wouldn't mind unmuting yourself, you have three minutes. Yeah, um, yeah I'm Sion Hubbard and I live at 753 Grand Marais. I have one question for the committee and by extension, uh, the city administration. But before I get to that, um, first of all, as a resident whose home will be directly affected by the implementation of the dog park at this site, um, I, I, I'm proud to say uh, my bed and not in my backyard. I refuse to be bullied, intimidated, and shamed into saying this. You know, it was very telling for me when I looked at Ghost Point Times, the Ghost Point Times this week, and I saw Mayor Denner quoted that the dog park will be 160 feet from the back of our homes and 60 feet from our fence line. Now, this would not park any, uh, pass any dog park standard, even if we were living in our front lawns. It's just too close to our homes. Uh, it was also disheartening to read uh, under the same article, a resident commenting, we will prevail. I thought to myself, prevail over what or whom? Prevail in making sure that our right to quietly enjoy our property is permanently ruined? Prevail in ensuring that my family and I can't relax in our home and backyard without the disturbance of barking dogs. Prevail in ensuring that my toddler's nap time and dinner time be constantly disturbed by the sound of your barking dog banner. Let, 
life must be great when this is the thing, you, thing that you must prevail over. Good for you. To add insult to injury, even though I am not in social media, I have heard of people calling us, and I quote, entitled, ignorant, selfish, effing yahoos, whatever that means. Because we dare to stand up to this clear injustice and ill-begotten location for a dog park. I personally will not be bullied by this online mob and by those who, by, and by those who egg them on. Clearly, I see Bannon has been reading those comments and those quotes. Thank you. Um, it is clear to me that this group holds that the right of their dogs to run and bark supersedes the right of my family and the families that live along this park to quietly enjoy their properties. The city is essentially taking the quietest part of the city to place a dog park. There's a reason dog parks are always placed away from homes. And if they must be close to residential properties, they're always on a busy thoroughfare where they're traffic passing to blank out the noise of the barking dogs. To city council, I want to say, please find a location for this dog park. It does not belong behind my house, Mr. Banner. And I am saying it, not behind my house. Yes, I am a NIMBY. It's where I live. This is where I pay my taxes, Banner. Now, my question to the committee is, having heard all this and to an extent the administration is, when, what does the city expect from us, the residents, who will be in the earshot of all this? What is our recourse when the dog barking get out of, got out of hand, when we can't uh, sit in our backyards? Who do, we, who do we call? Who do we complain? I saw all these rules, nothing for the residents that live here. And first of all, and I'd like to add it to Mr. Banner, nobody contacted us to do any type of work until after they started working. So please stop. Uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Hubbard, for your comments. Chris. Chris, did you pick the next individual? Yeah, I'm sorry. Go, uh, Mrs. Rock, if you wouldn't mind staying your name and um, you have three minutes. Great, thank you. Uh, my name is Ann Rock. I live on Grand Marais. Um, I am, first of all, um, I appreciate your comments, Mike. Um, I really don't see your need to gloat uh, and could sit down and have a cup of coffee with you at any time if you had ever responded to any of those requests. Um, but since that never happened, let's move on. Um, I'm looking at page 16 of the American Kennel Club rules, and right there it says that it's a bark-free zone. Please be considerate. Noise from the park is a nuisance to our neighbors. Dogs that bark persistently must be removed from the premises. Um, so I'd like to know what's going to happen. Um, I think your timer is wrong. I haven't used up all that time. Um, I'd like to know what's going to happen when there's a lot of barking from the park and where we use where we take those complaints uh, and why you haven't made that part of your rules. Um, and secondly, I'd like to close with your buddy Jared, um, who called us effing elitist yahoos on Facebook today. I don't think he's really who you want to reference in a meeting as a role model for any kind of process. So um, with that, I respectfully close. Um, I hope that you'll do something that will allow us to monitor and maintain the quiet levels that we have. Uh, that's all. Thanks. Thank you for your comments. And there was you mind saying your full name for the record. Go ahead. Thank you, Anna Sigarino. I've got several points here. So let's uh, bear with me. Uh, the cost is now $40 for the dog park pass where it was uh, estimated to be $50. So that is a reduction in ten dollars per park per household, which is coming up to uh, two to four thousand dollars fewer than what you had estimated in the financials. So somehow you're gonna have to make up th those dollar amounts. And even two hundred dog park dog households um, is a real stretch because Gross Point Farms only has one hundred and twenty twenty. Uh, second item is uh, dogs should not be allowed to fornicate in the dog park. You ought to have a rule on that because I don't want to be at the park and watches, watching dogs romp and fornicate. Uh, number three, you should be looking at the um, American Veterinarian Medical Association for information and not the American Kettle Club. I mean, the AKC is right up there with the, uh, uh, the NRA, in my opinion. So let's get some real data and some, some real information. I second Ann Rock's comment about having a place for park users to formally complain in, in order to, uh, to write up an incident report for dog 
dogs that are not following the rules or for dog owners who are not following the rules. Um, because the reality is, even if we do have a, a form, it's a joke. When three weeks ago, a dog jumped on the back of my daughter while she was sitting on the ice rink on her back with its face up to my daughter's face, nothing happened. I filed a report and, and the police took it as a joke and Chad and Nick didn't do anything about it. And city council didn't do anything about it. So basically this woman, even though it was controlled and on a leash, the, she allowed her dog to jump on my daughter's back and nothing happened. So the reality is all of your rules, they're just a joke. I think I have one more point. I'm looking for my other point on this. Oh, Bannon and Jared Kudzia, you did in 2015 a dog park study in Patterson Park. You did a cheap design. It was what, between 30 and $50,000. The only good thing that you said was that at least you have its own parking area and at least it's on the other, the entrance where the gatekeeper can look and see what's going on visually instead of being behind the ice rink where nobody can keep an eye on what's going on with these dogs. So kudos to you. And that's also where Sue Grissom had put the, uh, the dog park. The, the location inside Patterson Park is wrong. I definitely it's wrong when they're sharing our parking space and it's wrong. We're not talking about global warming here, okay? We're talking about the fact that you cut down eight trees and that is part of our health and well being is to have trees in green space. So nobody's saying that, okay, all of a sudden we're gonna die of toxicity, but the reality is dog urine does damage plantings and it does damage the lawn and you're gonna have to reseed it. And you gotta figure out how the hell you're gonna get another two to $400,000. Two, two um, Thank you very much for your comments. Emily, if you wouldn't mind unmuting yourself and stating your full name for the record. Hi, uh, my name is Emily Trupiano and I'm a emergency veterinary technician. Um, I would like to point out that I really appreciate all the etiquette and um, the rules that you guys are imposing. I would suggest that you guys put this all together in the form of a, like an orientation for pet owners. I know some other communities like Farmington and West Bloomfield, they actually have to complete an orientation um, and then take a little quiz afterwards. And I think that it's worth um, put, making them go through that extra step um, to help prevent uh, dog bites, which I've seen a whole bunch of in the past year um, at work. And I just wanna make sure that people's pets and people are safe. And um, I think it would be worth going um, forward with that. Um, I think it would be worth going over the responsibilities of pet owners and also basic um, pet behavior and um, body language. And that's it. Thank you very much for your comments. Carolyn Hill, if you wouldn't mind saying your full name for the record, you have three minutes. Hi, you guys. My name is Caroline Hill. I just wanted to thank you all. I'm really excited about the dog park. It seems like you put a ton of thought into this. And I know my family and friends who I've talked to are all really looking forward to this. I know we can do this in a safe way and in a way that's respectful to all that live close by to the park. So thank you. Also, I thought it was a great point when you guys were talking about how this will help draw in young people and keep everyone happy with just the amenities that we have in our community. So just wanted to say thank you. And I appreciate everything you guys are doing for us with the park. Thank you very much for your comment. Ed Kinry, if you wouldn't mind standing your full name for the record, you have three minutes. Hi, my name is Ricky Atkins. Um, I just moved to the park with my wife and two little dogs in August. And, um, the press about there being a dog park was in no small choice or no, no, like this is part of the reason why we chose to live here. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, thank you for keep moving on with that, but also was curious if there was, um, would be a, a segregated section for the smaller dogs. I know, like, for example, we came, we moved from Detroit downtown and like the Shinola dog park, had it so that there was like little bars in one section so that the little dogs could not get through the bars. Um, and I know that, you know, some of the other dog parks in Detroit 
um, particularly the one in campus or Grand Circus Park did not have that. And I know their dogs, little dogs would get through the bars and ours ran down Woodward one time. It was not a very fun experience for us, but um, I just wanted to bring that up and ask that you take that into consideration. And uh, yeah, cause sometimes the little dogs and the great Danes, <laughs> it's not safe for everybody, but um, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for your comments. Uh, Chad, Chairman, that concludes all hands raised. Thank you, Chris. I'm sorry, Chad. Who's, who's the woman that spoke after um, Ann Rock? I missed her name. Hmm. Um, Poor Emily. That's it. Uh, Anna Signorino. Signorino. Oh. Okay, thank you. I'd just like to say I, a couple of points I had not heard before were brought up in that segment Yeah, that I think deserve, uh, you know, as long as this thing is dragged down, I hate to say it, but deserve uh, uh, some further consideration. And what would those be? Because I have a couple myself. Well, uh, uh, persis persistent barking dogs uh, should be prohibited. I think that I know people are concerned about the noise level. And if you get dogs in there that just will not stop barking, I think that could be a, a reason for expulsion, a valid reason. Yeah. Um, the, the, uh, the, the idea of having an orientation or kind of a little quiz before people get their pass as part of the application process, that sounded like a pretty interesting idea. And then finally, the whole idea of having a, a small dog uh, segregated section somehow so that you don't have the Great Danes with the little bitty dogs, you know, that could possibly become a problem. I mean, as soon as, as, soon as you see one of them being aggressive, it's probably too late. So maybe having a segregated section for very small dogs might make sense. I mean, I had not thought about it before just now. Well, it turns out that if you go to Balduck Park and examine their uh, dog park, uh, they have uh, acreage, you know, upon acres, acres and acres of room there. And they also have one small area fenced off for small dogs. Um, I, I would say that uh, we would, that's a very good uh, uh, suggestion. And if uh, we find that we need such a thing, uh, we may ask our donor if uh, the donor would wish to donate more to make that happen. I would add, I support what you're saying there, uh, both Bob and uh, Larry, but what about the issue of complaints from the home, the homeowners? I mean, is there, what is their normal complaint? The, the indication we got from the caller was that they ignored it. They thought it was a joke. It's, uh, you know, they're not going to take it seriously. Uh, well, the uh, Department of Public the Safety. Department of Parks and Recreation is, the, is, you know, holding the reins on this whole thing. I would think that would be the first person someone would think about if they've got a complaint, they're going to go to Chad or to uh, Nick. Well, there is, there is uh, uh, in the Department of Public Safety, a noise ordinance and any, uh, noise that is uh, uh, not in keeping with uh, the community, uh, they can uh, call the police and have them come over there and uh, uh, take care of the barking dog. Bob, that re-raises the question of whether it's appropriate for us and the helpful hints to define barking as uh, ordinary activity. I think that we're getting awfully far over our skis there for that exact reason. That's why I referenced persistent barking because if a dog just comes in and just, you know, and I've, I've, I've seen it, they, they bark their head off, you can't get them to stop, that's a problem. All dogs occasionally will bark a little bit and that's not a problem, I don't think. But persistent barkers, yeah, that's that's a problem. I, guess I, 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 still, have, I still have a challenge with our group attempting to define barking when there's an ordinance in place. I just, I don't see how this benefits anyone because if our rules 
comport with the ordinance, then uh, let's just refer to the ordinance. And if they differ right. from the ordinance, then we're causing trouble. Uh, I, I continue to think that we're, those helpful hints are going to cause more difficulty rather than less. And uh, I, I would refer people to the noise ordinance if barking was an issue. And that's, that's also where the incident report will come in hand as well as if they report that multiple times, that's something we'll be able to see. So if the same dog is reported, you know, multiple times, we can take action on that. And we will have the um, uh, park rangers and things like that working um, near that area at peak times and things as well. So they will be able to monitor that along with the cameras. And Chad, for the benefit of the, the community members in attendance, the as we have at the bottom of the incident report form, you'll be able to tell from the FOB if there's a dog that is part of a repeated pattern. So Absolutely. they don't need to go over, they don't need to, you know, try to deal with the situation themselves. There's a form to be filled out. And if there is a pattern or a repeat offender, then you and your team can identify that and address it through the process. Uh, and so the that form that we discussed is the key to all of this. Is that fair? Absolutely. That's the great part about the key fob system that we will have. Every time that you scan in there, it will log you. So we are able to go back and track that. So if you open the gate four times in a row, that's going to be very suspicious. We'll be able to see why you opened it repeatedly so many times. Or again, we'll see when the incident reports were done. We'll go check the log. Yep, that dog was in there within that time frame that many times or those, those amount of visits. Just... <laughs> Just to go back to the uh, incident report then, as I read it, this is primarily for injuries, um, dog, park, dog park incident bite report, and most everything refers to first aid, veterinary, doctor. Um, so where incident are we? Is an incident, any it's incident. Code of conduct violations, or we're going to change it to the park rule violations would be part of the incidents, right? We're changing that language to incidents involving, what do we call those? The dog park rules violations? Yeah, dog park, park rules rule violations. Okay, okay. Thank you. Any other comments from uh, the commissioners? Do we need, in light of Lori's comment, to add the term disruptive to one of the rules? Uh, the rules don't explicitly address barking uh, unless we have the under control language as referring to that. Uh, so do if the incident reports for violation of the dog park rules, That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. And, but Chad, Chad is going to have to exercise his discretion. Yeah, this is a big responsibility for you. And I think it's um, might prove to be very difficult. It's obviously Roy, I, I think you're right, Roy, but I, I think that without a sound component in there, mm -hmm. it's it's a challenge for us to ask the the people who have a complaint about barking to identify a violation of the rule no matter how loud it is. And if the if the goal is to avoid going to public safety with all of these and instead let Chad and his team address it through the, the key fob process, then perhaps if we uh, just add something to the rules about uh, dogs must always be supervised and must not be disruptive, uh, that would give the ability to cover many types of behavior uh, and give Chad that discretion. It gives us a little leeway on how to how to deal with that. I, I agree with you, Mike. I also agree, yes. So you're adding language, where are you putting it? Uh, what's your... So the rule bullet point of dog owners must remain with their dogs. Uh, the second sentence says dogs must always be supervised. We could add it there. Uh, dogs must always be supervised and must not be disruptive. Well, we, we left in the under control part too, didn't we? We did in the in the first sentence. Yeah, I'm looking at adding this to the second sentence. Yeah. So right in that section, um, mentioning something about disruptiveness 
which could encompass sound and barking, I think makes a lot of sense. Got that noted to put in. Very good. Okay. I have a comment. Um, I really like the idea that Emily made about the orientation. Um, just trying to think it through, how would you do that? Uh, would you once a month, let's say somebody signed up January 2nd, and you just say before you give them the fob, they need to go to an orientation. So that would require someone from the city to give an orientation for everybody who signed up in the month of January before they use the park. And do that every month. Is that, I mean, it could be a 15 minute orientation, but I do like the idea. I just don't know how to implement it. Yeah, it made it sound like she was suggesting maybe a, some sort of little quiz or something to see, you know, how much was gleaned from an orientation, make sure they get the crux of what we're trying to promote. Uh, and if they do, then they get the, uh, their application is processed accordingly. If they don't, then you say, wait a minute, <laughs> we, we got to talk to you a little further about well, I really, I really like the idea a lot because what if you give them the forms, they're going to look at the, they're just going to say, yeah, I read all the, all the above, and they really didn't. Yeah, Marty, it could be as easy if, if you guys want to go this way. If Chad decides, it could be as easy as putting an online quiz together, right? People can, you can have a video that they have to click on that shows some things that are publicly available, and you can have a quiz that answers the most salient points that you're worried about. And if they reach criteria, they pass the exam, they pass the exam. I think and that's it, a great idea. It's not bound to uh, taking up Chad's personnel's time to do it or having people wait a month to get access to the park. If they can complete the questionnaire, the exam, then, then they have mastered the material. Good, easy that's way that's to administer idea. it, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, a great I, idea. And I just searched for it as we're talking. West Bloomfield has an orientation video for permit holders of their dog park that comes up when you search it. So uh, perhaps we can ask Chad to take a look at what's out there so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel in terms yeah. of coming up with something. That's great. Yeah, great. Can do. Okay. Very good. Any other comments? Good meeting. I'd like to thank uh, the uh, commissioners for this meeting. I'd like to thank the um, public commenters for their comments. Uh, we hear you, we understand, and uh, as uh, needed, we'll take actions. Uh, we've made corrections, we've made improvements, uh, like uh, the small dog section, possibly, the orientation meeting, the video links with uh, click on a uh, quiz. I think those are all very, very uh, good suggestions and uh, uh, he'd like to thank you all for them. Uh, lastly, uh, our next meeting will be May 5th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Support. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good meeting. Yeah, Thank you. Good night, Have a great night. Thank you. Good night.